So why do cells need to divide? Is there any reason that the cells need to divide? Or else it could have been like one giant cell and that's the organism. Well, we'll do an experiment, but unfortunately I couldn't do this experiment. I can't do this experiment in front of you right now because there are many things which has to be, which is required here. But I will teach you the experiment properly and you can yourself conduct this experiment at home. Be careful. Okay. So follow the process, follow the procedures properly so that you can, you don't hurt yourself first of all and you get the proper and appropriate results. Okay. So we'll do the experiment. Experiment is this. What are these? These are nothing but three agar cubes. What do you observe? Do you observe that these cubes have different sizes? Three different sizes, what I can observe? Agar, you know, we have studied about it. Uh, this component, it's a gel, correct? Now these agar, they have been infused with NaOH. It's a alkali base, correct? And I'm sure you know about pH indicators. Now bromophenol blue, note it down. Bromophenol blue, yes. That's a indicator. Okay. This indicator in the presence of a base will give this particular color. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is agar. This has been infused with NaOH and bromophenol blue. And bromophenol blue, it's an indicator, pH indicator. In the presence of NaOH, that's a base. It gives a blue coloration. This color, correct? Okay. Now, bromophenol blue, in acidic condition, the color changes. And the change, I'll show it to you. Wait for it. Now, what we'll do is, now these cubes need to be inserted into a container which will have vinegar. Okay? Vinegar is an acid or a base. Come on, answer me. Vinegar is an acid or a base. Acid, of course. It's not a very strong acid, but it's a weak acid. Fine. So we have inserted here and it contains vinegar. It's a weak acid. Let's see what happens. Okay. But before that, I need you to revise this concept because we are going to apply here. Diffusion. What is diffusion? It's a movement of a substance from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And this will happen in usually with molecules like which can flow, right? Liquids and the gases. So diffusion is the movement of substances from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Okay, that's diffusion. See here. Correct? If I just label as section A and section B, section B has much lower concentration of the molecules, like the blue molecules, whatever is the molecule, now slowly and sadly, with time, it is going to diffuse from here to A to B, right? From higher to lower concentration. Concentration gradient, along the concentration gradient. Now the experiment, okay? So here, eventually what will happen is this color change. You see a yellowish, the color basically, the blue color is, it's disappearing. And a yellowish, I can see a yellowish tinge, right? But what do you observe? Do you see three cubes over here? I'll mark it for you. So the smallest one, medium sized and the largest one. I try to figure out the difference. Come on. Science is about observation. Figure out the difference. Note the difference. Tell me, what do you observe here? What is, uh, okay, let me give you a hint. What is the rate of change of this color? Do you observe? That's what is essential here. What's the rate of change? Yes? C. Can you see that the smallest cube has almost turned, the blue color is almost gone. Very slight is left over there. It's almost becoming yellowish, right? Right? Compared to that, if I Compare with the biggest, biggest cube, the color change is the minimum, right? Um, a lot of space is still blue in color. And this is an intermediate result. Fine, correct? Eventually with time C, this one is totally, the blue color is gone. 
here a small part is left but in the larger one largest one still the blue color is present over there but all are in vinegar right why is this happening it's so large it should have this should have happened much faster but that's not the case which you are seeing on the screen can any one of you tell me what is the reason behind it here you have to apply a bit of i think mathematics a bit of logic a bit of physics also yes let me see who can apply this concept what is the reason come on come on tell me what is the reason so basically i can conclude if i refer to as diffusion diffusion is happening faster in the smallest cube diffusion is slowest diffusion is slowest at the largest cube okay now what is the reason behind it let's apply different subjects knowledge that you've gained from different subjects okay let's see why is this relevant why is this relevant surface area and volume you know surface area you know volume can you calculate the surface area and the volume of these cubes yes yes keep calculating calculate it's very easy it's very easy surface area and volume I'm not going to tell you the formula because it's easy. We have been studying about this in your lower standards. Now, let me compare. Okay. Cell membrane and cytoplasm. Cell membrane is basically equivalent to the surface area of the cubes. Let's imagine these cubes as the cells. Well, don't misunderstand. I'm not referring to the fact that the cells are the size, the shape of the cell is cube. No, I'm just Take an analogy, okay? I'm just comparing. So the cell, let's imagine. So these are the cells of different sizes. Right? right? Okay. The cell membrane. The cell membrane will be equals to the surface area of the cubes. Perfect. How do you calculate? 6A square. Cytoplasm. That is the inner, everything inside the cell membrane. How will you calculate? What is that? That's a volume. It's a volume. How will you calculate a cube simple a cube can you quickly calculate the values the surface area and the volume of all the cubes cube a b and c come on do it quickly we are going to use this concept use these numbers in fact so calculate and keep listening cell membrane i'm comparing with the surface area yes because the cell membrane is covering the whole cell so it's basically the surface area cytoplasm is basically the volume of these cubes or the cells correct okay now let's apply fine this is the formula see the values now with the increase in size see the increase in the surface area 6 cm squared 24 cm squared 96 cm squared perfect Compare the increase in volume. 1 cm cube, 8 cm cube, 64 cm cube. What is the trend of the change or rather the rate of change? What is the trend are you observing if you compare the surface area, rate of change of surface area with the rate of change of volume? What do you observe? Do you find a difference? Come on. Tell me. Do you find a difference? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, first understand this. So, cell membrane, okay? The waste goes out through the cell membrane. Fine. So, if the surface area becomes more, then the probability that more of the waste will be thrown out of the cell increases. Of course. On the other hand, if I talk about the nutrients which has to move into the cell, again, if the surface area increases, increases, then there will be more surface area for the nutrients to get inside the cell. Fine. So the surface area is very essential for these diffusion processes because if the surface area increases, more and more of these molecules can diffuse in and out. Fine. Okay. Now again, let's apply here. See what happens. See what happens. I told you to calculate the rate of change of surface area, the rate of change of volume. If you go from A to C, Yes. What do you observe? Do you observe? Do you observe that the rate of the increase? Properly look at the figure and the numbers. Okay. Now, the rate of increase of the cytoplasm 
or I can say the volume. Once more, the rate of change of the cytoplasm or the volume is much higher than I can see the rate of increase of the surface area or the cell membrane. Correct? Once more, rate of change of volume, rate of change of volume of the cytoplasm is much more than compared to the rate of change of surface area or the cell membrane. Fine. Well, you know, we will we can calculate this effectively by calculating surface area by volume ratio. Calculate this. Try to calculate out. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio. And if you do that, it is giving nothing. But what 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 will you get if you do this calculation? You'll get the amount of surface area of the cell membrane, amount of surface area of the cell membrane which is available to service. To service per unit volume okay per unit volume of the cytoplasm amount of surface area present to serve per unit volume of the cytoplasm yes because sa by v correct okay now see as you increase the cell size as you increase the cell size the ratio what decreases the ratio decreases Correct? So that means, that means here, see the ratio 6, here 3, here 1.5 is decreasing as you increase the, cells, the size of the cell. So the process of the diffusion will also decrease if you increase the surface, if you increase the cell size. Correct? Got it? Can you relate to it? Now, let's see. So, as the cell increases in size, the increase in the surface area of the cell membrane available to service the volume of the cytoplasm becomes lesser and lesser. Once more, once more, note it down, please. So, as the cell increases in size, the increase in surface area of the cell membrane available to service the volume. Of course, this whole volume of the cell has to be serviced by what? The cell membrane, because that is the surface through which the wastes are going out, the nutrients are coming in. Correct? Well, so to service a proper volume, a definite volume, a definite amount of surface area is also required. Correct? But if it's decreasing, if it's decreasing, that's basically decreasing the diffusion. So, becomes lesser and lesser. In a larger cell, the thinner, the sorry, the inner parts of the cell might start to starve of the nutrients due to low diffusion rates. Got the logic? Why we are not made up of a single cell? Why we are not made up of a single cell? Because of this, a large cell, in a large cell, the inner parts of the cell might have to starve the nutrients, might start, this might start to starve of the nutrients due to low diffusion rates because of this comparison of the surface area to volume ratio. I hope you understand this, right? This is very essential and important. Great. Now, let's dive into this basic question. Why do cells need to divide? Why do cells need to divide? First reason. Larger cells have large, have cell membranes, sorry. The larger cells have cell membranes that are really inefficient in transporting nutrients. You got this? Inside the cytoplasm and getting the wastes out. Why is it inefficient? Because the surface area to volume ratio it decreases correct okay cells divide to keep the size of the cell small enough that the membrane is comfortable if comfortably able to service all of the cytoplasm by bringing the nutrients and getting out the wastes so if the cell divides multiple cells are there so the surface area increases yes surface area will increase surface area to volume ratio will increase then it can maintain the cell the Ratio, the diffusion rates also. Correct? Okay. Reason two. As the cells become large, larger, and if the DNA in the cell remains the same, the DNA is not able to handle the demands placed by the large cells on it. That's a logical point. Cells divide in order to keep the cells small enough that the DNA inside the inside can eff efficiently handle the DNA. Yes, it contains the codes, so it has to efficiently handle. The demands placed on it by the cell. So you understand the size is very, very essential. Correct? Okay. 